Hi, AC. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. I, uh... Okay, well, um, yeah, of course, there is no topic. Um, there is, of course, not even a thing called non-duality or whatever. Um, yeah, there quite simply is nothing that is being discussed, so to speak, or suggested um or pointed to or illuminated or whatever um yeah i mean these meetings these so-called meetings so to speak seem to just come as a response one could say um yeah, because, of course, in and of itself, there is no message, as I say. So these meetings seem to come as a response to this so-called experience that I am me. Um, that I am, that this is me, this is my life. Um, and, of course, this is totally energetic, <clears throat> so to speak. So there is no one, of course. Um, all there is, is boundless energy, so to speak. Um, but this boundless energy, so to speak, can seem to appear, let's say, as this apparently contracted sense. <clears throat> as this seemingly contracted felt sense that I am here right now, so to speak, listening to Izzy. That it's and for the person, so to speak, this is just a given, one could say. It's non-negotiable. It's all the person knows, so to speak. Is that this is me, I'm sitting on this chair or whatever. I'm listening to Izzy. These are my thoughts. These are my feelings. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, for the person, this is a lived sense, so to speak. It really feels real, one could say. <laughs> of course, the suggestion is that it just isn't. <laughs> There just is no one. So there is no even illusion to be someone. Um, this sense, this so-called sense that once felt so real, so to speak, can just seem to suddenly explode, one could say. And then the funny thing is um, that it's revealed, one could say, that there just never even was this sense to be someone. There never was anyone. There never was an illusion to be anyone. And all there ever has been, so to speak, is boundless energy. Which, of course, is not something else. It's nothing mysterious or um, higher or deeper or whatever. Um, what appears to be happening, an apparent Zoom meeting, an apparent body sitting on Zoom, listening to Izzy, asking a question, is all there is, is boundless energy. And there's nothing mystical or spiritual or magical about it. Um, and of course, there is no path. There is no end destination called death where I will suddenly die or explode. No, the suggestion is it's this already. 
<clears throat> so of course nothing can happen and nothing needs to happen it's impossible for anything to happen so to speak in order for this to become more of what it is more whole and complete uh yeah i mean yeah of course there is no message so i think that's probably it from me <laughs> to start with at least um but yeah of course as always everything is welcome so um yeah you can unmute yourself or uh, type in the chat or <laughs> yeah just see what happens
Hi, Stephanie. <clears throat> you can unmute yourself. Hello, hello. Hello. It's dark here. I'm, I'm just che checking in before bed. Ah. Midwinter, New Zealand. So, oh, yeah, so. Wow. Hello, hello. That's why it's so oh. dark here. <laughs> <laughs> So I won't, I won't hang out, but I just wanted to say what a delight to hear you talking and, or to hear talking happening or whatever way you want to put it. And um, from my home zone in a way, I grew up near Crowborough. Um, oh, wow. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, but the thing is, whole life of spiritual seeking. <laughs> So is it that easy just to drop souls, karma, all <laughs> that? Reincarnation. Reincarnation. <laughs> just laugh at it and let it all go. I mean, well, yeah, of course, no one can let it go, but this can just seem to just totally collapse. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, like built up habits in the body or whatever may just seem to continue to play themselves out. But of course, there's just not this so-called sense that there's someone doing them anymore. So they just seem to just fall away or things like this. Yeah. So there's nothing to understand about life. Oh, yeah, of course not. No. There is not even an actual thing called life or whatever that could be understood or not. Wonderful. The, the, the giggling you hear in the background, I'm going to declare <laughs> Andrew Forrest, who you've had a little exchange with. Oh, hi, hi Andrew. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> so late. You can see I've got my anorak on, scarf, but I live out in the woods. <laughs> oh cool and Steph's my um, landlady and um, I said I'm not going on tonight I'm so bugger because I've been listening to you all day <laughs> and now it's real so it's even worse I can't get away what are we going to do <laughs> Shit. no one with any control here <laughs> it's like you, you're speaking Tony Parsons 20 years later we, we, we've been with him for 20 years and we're still fucking here man <laughs> that's a long time <laughs> But sort of not, you know, because he's he's made it all very clear for a long time <laughs> that we're hallucinating. But there we are. Oh, <laughs> well, it's lovely to meet you, and I'm sure I'll come on a different time when I've got some energy. I'm totally exhausted. Well, when the clocks change, it won't be so bad then. It's like it's we we we're we're um early bedders and we're not twenty two. It's all right for you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being 22 that is easy that staying up all night shit but anytime <laughs> after six o'clock and I've got to get my cocoa off I go <laughs> and it's now ten o'clock so I'm past my cell by day <laughs> but lovely to meet you have a great meeting oh nice to meet you nice to chat <laughs> lovely beautiful and no karma no no souls oh yeah exactly yeah of course not a hundred percent can we have that in writing? Yeah, can we have that in writing? And we get to the gates. You know, we're closer to the gate than you are. And we get to the gate, and St. Peter says, actually, you just wasted the last 20 years of your life listening yeah. to Izzy. Yeah. <laughs> Blame me for Tony. I think Tony comes in heavier than you on that one. It's all your fault, Izzy. Yes. <laughs> Lots of love. Take care. Much love. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in the chat, so, um, there is no me, yeah, 
Uh, no question about that, but thought comes and me appears. Then another thought comes and a different me appears. Then no me, just life. This is what's happening here. Now the stupid question, is there more than this? Well, no, I mean, of course not, no. And there is just no, in that, so to speak, there is no me appearing and disappearing or whatever. Yeah, like you say, the, I mean, there just is no appearance and disappearance, like I say. So an apparent body typing a question, asking about me, no me, whatever, is just what appears to be happening. Just full on boundlessly itself. Um, and yeah, of course, there is, well, one can even say there's, well, there's just what appears to be happening, but one can't even say there's an actual this, that there could be more or less than or whatever. There's just no more or less. What appears to be happening is already whole and complete. It can't become any more or any less. So a, a body asking a question, there is no me, then me appears, blah, blah, blah. It's just what appears to be happening. But of course, there's no one in that. And this sense to be me, so to speak, doesn't really seem, for me, it doesn't seem to just be this thought. It seems to be this real lived sense for me. This is how it seems to feel. So, of course, there's the whole story that seems to come with this. But energetically, it seems to feel as if I am me. I am here. Or whatever. I mean, this would probably turn into I am not me or I am awareness or whatever game the person starts playing. But it all revolves around this sense that there is something to begin with, however vast or however small or whatever, there just seems to be an, an initial sense by the so-called person that there is something here. Or any sense at all, of course. And yeah, the suggestion, of course, is just that there isn't. So, of course, the so-called thoughts are just so-called thoughts or whatever. Um, but the the suggestion is that this sense can just totally explode and die and is not replaced by another sense a sense of there being no one or a sense of there being nothing or whatever or a sense of me having died no there's just no sense there is no replacement which for the person is totally inconceivable totally inconceivable for me, there has to be a death and then something else. But yeah, of course not. There's just death. <laughs> of course, what me would be hoping would be that it could get this death, so to speak, and have something in that or whatever. Or somehow survive a part of it or whatever. But yeah, of course not. This is already impossible. So yeah, there is no more than this, but there also is just, of course, not a this that there could be more than or less than, or whatever. <clears throat> Sorry, C. Hello, yeah. Hi. So I'm a little bit confused. So I, um, so, so when the contraction happened, as you said, that bodily feeling, whatever. So are you saying? that will disappear altogether? Well, no, I mean, the suggestion is just that there isn't one in the first place. Yes, there isn't one in the first place, but there is this sort of, uh, I, I don't know, the I, illusion sort of, I don't know what it is, but there is sort of feeling that, like, for example, when I'm thinking of my children, I am I become the mother, like 100% mother, and then my children... So that that thing, that feeling, are you saying that will go away as well? And, or is, like, is that the part of this thing, life, like that, that happened and then <clears throat> life just goes on and then 
somehow I become the mother again. Is well, that I mean, of course, the, the suggestion is just that there's already just what appears to be happening fully itself. So thoughts about the kids, thoughts about being a mother, um, so-called anxieties, whatever, is just already what appears to be happening. Just uh, apparent thinking as a function of the body or whatever, um, or apparent thoughts that these are my kids and I'm their mother and we're gonna go to the, do this tomorrow, whatever. It's just, just totally natural. Um, and the suggestion is nothing goes away. Nothing changes in that sense because there is nothing to change. Yes. So there is no me that could collapse. Yes. Just these thoughts that I am the mother and da 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 da, it's already happening to no one. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but I got confused when you say that there's this sudden explosion and then everything collapsed. Collapse. I know what you mean, though. Like, even though I'm feeling like a mother, it is not like before. Like when I before I heard this message, I was me. Like there is like it's different. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Of course. When I say this sudden explosion, um, the funny thing is, of course, this just doesn't happen, and this mm -hmm. is totally inconceivable. So, of course. There's this this explosion or collapse or whatever is of course only ever apparent, and actually nothing happens, nothing happens, and that is just for the person, and that is totally inconceivable for the person. Something has to happen. So yeah, with hearing that there's a collapse or an explosion, it has to be another happening for the person. So can you describe what that's like or what have? But of course. The suggestion is this apparent collapse is just nothing happening. Nothing happens. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, in the chat. Um, uh, hello, Izzy. What do you think about death? We're getting to the juicy stuff now. Right. Um, <laughs> I asked this question because it happens for all the apparent bodies, whether there is a me or no me. Well, I mean, yeah, of course, there just is no death. Um, so, I mean yeah one day so to speak or whatever um the physical body will just seem to just wear out one could say or just whatever just apparently stop functioning but of course this can't even be said to be an actual stop functioning or whatever because of course the the body the apparent body never actually starts functioning in that sense so, of course, for the person, even with the physical body, so to speak, there would have to be a beginning and an end. But, of course, this is only ever apparent. There is no actual beginning or end. So, yeah, one could say the physical body just seems to just apparently stop functioning. But, of course, yeah, as I say, this would already be saying too much because it never even actually starts functioning. And so, yeah, I mean, as you say, all apparent bodies will just seem to apparently just stop breathing or functioning or whatever. And yeah, I mean, nothing happens, of course, because nothing ever started. Um, I mean, of course, for me, 
the death of the body, so to speak, is the death of me because me feels I am the body or I'm in the body or whatever. So the death of the body is suddenly very important because I will probably go with it. Or I am the body or whatever it feels. And the body is of this importance for me or whatever. But yeah, of course, the body is just what apparently happens. There's no one in that or outside of that. So yeah, as I say, one day the body will just seem to just wear out or whatever. But of course, there is no actual death. And yeah, I mean, this sense to be me can seem to just energetically, as I say, explode or whatever. Of course, not actually. Um, before the body seems to wear out or whatever. And then you just seem to get annoying things like me just saying this message or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, for, well, of course, there is no one to fall away ever, of course. But uh, as a story, for most so-called bodies, it seems that this sense to be me just seems to explode with the physical death. Apparently, of course. Um, but yeah, one can't even say it can explode before and you can die before you die or all this dramatic stuff. I mean, no, of course not. There just is no explosion either way. <laughs> so whether it apparently happens before the body dies or or when the body dies, or whatever, it just never even happens. <laughs> I mean, it's already this. And yeah, I mean, there just aren't, there's no, there's nothing to say about death because death is nothing. Death is this. An apparent body replying to a question on Zoom is death. I mean, for me, death is waiting in the future, so to speak. But no, I mean, this is death. Hi, Stephanie. Here comes Andrew again. Hello. <laughs> um, can't get away, is he? Hi. I'm just, <laughs> kneeling. I'm just <laughs> kneeling on the floor. Um, uh, you were going to say something in one of your videos. You were saying something about you were watching Netflix, needed to go to the toilet, had a break, and between the television room and the toilet, you died. Is that... Yeah. Is that Accurate. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Can you describe what happened between the toilet and the Netflix room? That's what we all want to know, right? What happened then? Or can't you put it into words, maybe? Well, no, of course not. I mean, what? it's just totally indescribable. So, Did you remember it? Did you remember it? Well, I mean, there just, of course, there just seemed to be this apparent explosion, one could say. 
Um, but the funny thing is, so to speak, is that nothing actually happened. Um, and looking looking back or whatever and trying to describe it or whatever is totally impossible because there just yeah. is this line. Yeah. So the funny thing is, is that, well, I thought this too, that there would be this line or whatever. That, okay, I would think I was me and da 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 and then I would die and then there'd be no me or whatever. But yeah, I mean, the surprise in many ways is just that it's impossible. There is no line of before. But you can't help it. If, if you're in the dream of linear progression of time and space, which 8 billion bodies are, you can't help but be expecting a line because you're walking along one. It, it, apparently, exactly, exactly. So, you know, the, the dream is a dream, but it's all you've got is reality. So in a way, in a sense, there is a line because you probably felt pretty different before that moment, just as a body. Because, you know, you said you've gone through quite a lot of fear and distress and all the things that most people go through, you know, towards the end of their apparent dreams dropping. So you must have felt a profound change in the body, even though there's seen that there's no you that has a change in the body. But the body must have registered presumably a huge, a, a huge a shift in uh, sort of just how it feels to be in the body. Well, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, of course, one could say the difference, so to speak, is just that I no longer feel. So do you find feelings are stronger in a funny kind of way with no filter? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, I yeah. well, I don't, but there's just feelings are just full on, boundlessly, 100% intense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I've got to say you, otherwise I'll say your body and would be like non-dual police, you know, it's kind oh, of like... Oh, yeah, 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 but in the sense I... that there's just... I mean, before there would have been me, the feelings were happening to me. And yes. then so-called explosion, then there just seems to be feelings. And yeah, yeah I mean, in a funny way, the body, um, one could say, just seems just, I mean, certain behaviours just seem to just totally collapse. And then others, perhaps, that have been more habit habitual or neurotic or whatever, just seem to perhaps just play themselves out and just slowly relax. And the body just seems to slowly just, just relax and cleanse itself of all of this yeah. crap that's had before or built up or whatever. Like a natural healing without trying to become healed intentionally, totally just automatically happening on its own. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like the electricity has gone out of the fan, Absolutely. but the fan is still spinning. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, sounds, and, sounds, and sounds this, wonderful, obviously. Well, I mean, of course, for the person, this the one could say the person's whole life, so to speak. One of the things it tends to want to do a lot is heal itself or whatever. Yeah. Um, and of course, one could say in a funny way, with this so-called death, like you say, then the true healing begins in many ways, which is funny, of course. So this. Yeah, the body just seems to be able to just breathe and naturally just be itself, so to speak. And probably you don't feel unsafe anymore, but I think all, all me's feel 100%. Well, they don't feel it 100%, but there's, there's a total lack of safety in 8 billion bodies walking around. Well, it's just I mean, not of course, me There's always a threat you're going to die. That's what I mean, I suppose. Exactly, exactly. Me, this sense to be me is this sense to be on constant survival. That's that's a lot of fear out there and a lot of anxiety and a lot of holding of neurotic, neurotic patterns. When you're around a lot of people, you can feel it very strongly. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. one could say so. Yeah, of course. Um... The sort of intensity of the, the, um, the holding. Within myself, within anyone I know, really. I mean, there's not too many people I've... I mean, I've met Tony and Jim, been on retreats about them, but there's not too many people I've met speaking this way. And, you know, you just know when someone is because you're free of all this. It's obvious without the need to even say you are. It's it's really very resonant and authentic, just like it was with Tony straight away. Like, we both found him in early 2000s, and it was almost like, oh, that's it. I've had it with Ramana. I've had it with spirituality. I've had it with meditation. That's it. And then 20 fucking 20. It's interesting to have spent this long 
with that clarity, but not necessarily anything more than that. It's a long time. Yeah, but I mean, as, as well as you know, the other things that can happen in twenty years, of course. Yeah, and of course, the funny thing in many ways is that the person, so to speak, will always be waiting for yeah. something to happen. Um, yeah. And of course, the suggestion is just that that something will never happen. Yeah. Because there yeah, is good no... news and bad news, isn't it? It's like it's the worst news and the best news. Yeah, exactly. For the person, it's this so-called loop. I mean, the fact that nothing is going to happen or could happen, like you say, on the one hand is a relief, so to speak, but on the other hand is deeply terrifying, it seems. We're most afraid of our own absence and we most want it. Yeah, exactly. One could say so, yeah. Which, of course, an absence that's already the case. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Thank you, Izzy. Beautiful. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> or just get to bed eventually. <laughs>
Izzy, can I ask you to talk a bit about experience, please? Because um, a lot of people, the, the, the radical non-dual speakers say there's no experience any longer. Yeah. yeah. Could you talk about that, you know, like hot, cold, taste, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, these just seem to be apparent functions of the body, one could say, tasting, uh, listening, um, talking, hearing, thinking, feeling, whatever. I mean, these all these range of so-called functions just seem to be apparent functioning, as I say, of the body. But yeah, of course, there just is no experience of that. Um, I mean, to have this so-called experience of that, there seems to, to be this one at the centre who these so-called things seem to happen to. So, I mean, for me, me feels itself to be at the centre and that everything happens to me. So feelings, I mean, whatever, pain in the body, it still is my body or whatever for me. And so, I mean, yeah, of course, me may try to detach itself from these things with things like awareness or whatever. Um, but really, it's still, there's still this sense of something or someone or whatever being at the centre. And yeah, the suggestion just is that there just is no centre already. So there just is nothing or no one in the middle um, experiencing what appears to be happening. And so they're just, I mean, this is death. There just is no experience. So there's just what appears to be happening. And it's just full on aliveness, totally boundless, boundlessly itself. So it's functioning very well in that body because you're obviously compass mentis. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Well, you know, you don't you don't need someone to help you. You're obviously functioning a fun functioning body really well. So well, this functions is, don't even have improved, I would imagine. Well, this is the funny thing in many ways, is that me would feel everything would fall apart without me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how could things just but of course the funny thing is in many ways, is that um well, in every way, is that things are already so-called functioning by themselves without me already yeah so there's no when me drops then functioning will happen by itself no it's already just automatic so to speak it's already just happening by itself so, to speak. so when you're drinking coffee if you drink coffee whatever the taste is happening but why is that not an experience? Can't, why can't it be an impersonal experience? Like if you're driving a car, you need impersonal awareness of knowing distance in a road. So you know a car's 50 meters in front of you or 100 feet. So that's obviously a, a practical application of um, dimensional awareness. And But your body has that. And your body has a sense of taste. So how is that not an ex Couldn't it be an impersonal experience? And I did ask Andreas the same question, funnily enough. So it'd be really interesting to see what you say. Well, I mean, yeah, of course, there's just there's just no experience either way, whether this is personal or impersonal. So but there's the taste just, of the coffee. The taste of the sorry to interrupt. The taste of the coffee is just is taste that? of the coffee. Okay, so I can't understand that. Well, yeah, of course not. It's totally inconceivable because for for the person there has to be something registering or knowing or experiencing or aware that there is coffee being tasted wow but there just is nothing at that center so drinking coffee is just drinking coffee is what is apparently happening and there's just no sense at all of that is so there a sense of enjoyment would that be that's fair to say. I mean, it's a very real question, is it? Because obviously we enjoy things and we don't enjoy things, right? Most humans go through pleasure and pains. Well, all we enjoy things. We don't, you know, there's version and attraction for everyone. So in that body, is there an enjoyment of coffee? Well, without, I mean, 
something more than yeah, that. Yeah, of course, there just seem to be preferences, one could say. Yeah, yeah. So the body just seems to, I mean, yeah, in that sense, I prefer tea over coffee or whatever. The yeah. body just seems to just prefer different things. But there's just, of course, no one at the centre sensing that this is happening to me or knowing yeah. these preferences or whatever that yeah. oh okay I really prefer coffee so da 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 or whatever I mean so yeah in this sense of I mean to me this enjoyment sort of seems to be um quite a personal thing it seems in this sense of personal enjoyment and really sort of um enjoying that for me I mean, that's how that word sort of seems to sort of feel. Um, I mean, yeah, of course, one could just say the body enjoys things and then in terms of pleasure or whatever, uh, and then the body doesn't, you know, there's more pain in other things. But really, there's, there's of course, this whole sense of, oh, I really enjoying that is just gone. Mm. Mm. you're not even aware of the enjoyment it's just enjoyment but you wouldn't even be thinking to name it or see it or so it's hard probably for you to say if there was enjoyment because actually there wasn't anything maybe yeah I mean exactly I mean the body just may have pleasure or whatever but this enjoyment kind of seems to be this extra layer so to speak of of this sense to be me and oh I'm really enjoying this and I must then have it again and create it again or whatever I mean no there just seem to be pleasures there seem to be pains but there's just no one chasing or avoiding either they're just full on themselves yeah, that makes sense. yeah I mean I I may like watching netflix or whatever but there's just of course no sense and there's no um oh yeah that's something i really enjoy i mean no don't it's astonishing <laughs> it sounds very uh, depressing yeah it does yeah it's like a bit flat <laughs> but it's not really no it doesn't actually i can tell by your engagement with everyone and your joy that you're very far from flat you know you're obviously very in love I mean there must be an in loveness with life like I'm a painter and when I'm painting there's no time and there's no me painting on a good day so it's like whoa that's in love with the act of holding a paintbrush and being in the studio in the woods you know it's like don't get any better than that but it's not because I was thinking it, it, it you must have a, an in loveness I would imagine rather than it being completely empty and rather dry and well I mean I don't have either one could say there's just in loveness or there's yeah. just love or unconditional love or whatever so yeah and there's there's just no in loveness with anything yeah there's yeah just, just in loveness yeah exactly there's just unconditional love so what appears to be happening is unconditional love I mean to have this relationship of in loveness with already seems to set up this too when yeah. there's just holy love, one could say. Um, yeah. this, uh, this alive in loveness, so to speak. But yeah, I mean, uh, with this flat thing, it's funny because in a sense, this is total equanimity, one could say, in that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the person, really, the spiritual person, so to speak, seems to always be striving for this equanimity or whatever. But of course, personal equanimity is impossible. Because what is, is just totally naturally um, equal already. Yeah, yeah, everything is, yeah, everything's equal. Absolutely. You can't, you can't have more of one thing than another because there aren't two things. Exactly. And but so we, we, we this, feel uh, things are unfair, don't we? If humans feel things are, you know, they've got to change because it's not right. And that's, I want to change that because that's not a good thing for those people or those animals or the exactly. planet. Or, yeah. And it's understandable. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, with this enjoyment thing, this, I mean, this seems to go with the highs and lows of me, so to speak. So yeah. the highs being, oh, I'm really enjoying that, that's great. And the lows being, I'm really hating that, that I have to get rid of that or whatever. And of course, this whole up and down just totally collapses. So there's just, I mean, of course, there's just boundlessly emotion or whatever appears to be happening, which may one I mean could say is apparently up and down joy and sadness or yeah. whatever but there's just no experience of one being higher than the other 
like a sort of neutrality? One could say so, but it's not experienced, of course. But there's just no science neutrality. It's yeah. just everything's equally the beloved, or that's a very poetic Shakespearean, you know, Indian word, but I love it because it's like in, in loveness with the beloved, because it's appearing as a butterfly and dog shit, you know, it's appearing as war and peace. And yeah, exactly. How, how amazing that it does all that. Yeah, and I mean, in a funny sense, to the person, this so-called equanimity, the person would probably think of this as being a, a straight face, never affected by anything. I mean, that's really what the person would hope from equanimity, is that um, I am then protected from the ups and downs or whatever, and I'm in this bubble where everything is perfect and equal all the time. But actually, in a funny way, this natural equanimity is totally... Um, boundlessly up and down in that sense one could say so there could just be boundless sadness and grief and then boundless happiness and joy and they're just totally boundless yeah mm -hmm. for long, for oh, no for long. One. yeah exactly no filter none of that yeah amazing beautiful wow <laughs> so the experience question is just it's a way it's like pissing in the wind Oh, well, I mean, what do you mean? Like, you know what I mean? Pissing in there. Like, it's, like, it's like talking to the wind. It's like, you might yeah. as well, if we ask you a question, you're only going to get the same freedom answer, which is that it's just what's apparently happening and it's incomprehensible. And that's beautiful. I can't hear it too much, but there's no other, there's no other thing really, is there? That's all you can say. There's just what's apparently happening and don't know what it is. Well, I mean, of course, because there actually is no actual question even. Yeah. So just, of course, it would be impossible for there to even be an answer. Because what appears to be happening has no question. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So even saying this is it, this is whole and complete, of course, is not even an answer. It's too much already. <laughs> well, one could say so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do you what? even open your mouth? But your words just coming out, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And what is just it does? There's just no knowledge of itself, so to speak. So it's to have a question is just not even a thing. It's extraordinary. So everything that we think is an occurrence is actually really. A, I mean, you probably won't want to go this far with a description, but a play of light, undifferentiated light. In the like, sense that there just are no happenings in that yeah, sense. Yeah, it's just like empty film, yeah. You take the it film is. out of the camera, it's just a screen. I mean, I know that's a boring old hat analogy, but it feels quite useful to... I mean, like, yeah, well, even in this metaphor, there just is no actual screen or play or yeah, whatever. Yeah, anything. I mean, with this so-called death, nothing is left. Not even life or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> what does that mean? Is it, you mean there's no? It's just a dream. Or well, no, of course, of course not. I mean, there's there's just what appears to be happening, but there's just there's there's no certainty either way. So there's no. there's nothing left in the sense that there is no actual life. So this yeah. apparent Zoom call is just what appears to be happening. So it can't even be said to be definitely happening. But mm -hmm. also, of course, it can't be said to be definitely not happening. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, in this sense, right. it's neither real nor is it a dream or a play or whatever. It's just, I mean, nothing could be said about it. It's just what seems to be going on. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's an extraordinary thing to hear. Um, really beautiful. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Where the fuck are you going to go after that? Well, yeah, I, well, of course. I really think I'll go to bed now because that is like, you know, that that's it, right? You can't say a word. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. All those people talking a lot out there on the internet, quite a few of them calling themselves non dual It's like, oh, yawn. It's, like, it's so rare. We were going through our list today of people that we've been loving and listening to, and it's like 10 um, in the world. A lot of them were like already there for 10 years, 20 years. There's not many. That's incredible to say that with 8 billion. It's like extraordinary, but 
I can't find anymore. And they all, you all say the same thing. It's beautiful. It's very consistent. Always sounds the same. Always sounds natural, authentic, unpretentious, unspecial, horribly challenging, incomprehensible, extraordinarily funny. And like, I, I've not been able to stay away from it since 9, 2000, since you were born. I've been kind of like, we're turning yeah. and it's like, yeah. you lucky bugger. <laughs> <laughs> You had such an easy ride. I made mean, 22 years and you're liberated. It's not fair, is he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. It must be good karma, eh? Right? <laughs> oh, well, let's not <laughs> go there. No, don't be kidding. Honestly, <laughs> I really am. Brilliant. Thank you so much again. Thanks, Andrew. Lovely to chat. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Stephanie. Bye, <laughs> Lovely. <laughs>
Okay. Um, yeah, well, the next meeting will be on Wednesday um, at 6 p.m. Uh, BST. And yeah, apart from that, <laughs> thank you so much for coming and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, your weekend. Thank you, Izzy. Oh, thank you. Take Beautiful. care, everyone. <laughs> Bye. We can mute it. Yeah. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Izzy. Beautiful. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>